Hey there, ready for a deep dive into Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Yeah, always down for a good Kiyosaki breakdown. This book is like the ultimate starter pack for thinking differently about money, right? It's a classic for a reason. And we're diving into your notes and highlights today. See what really hit home for you. Love that. So right off the bat, that whole two dads thing. Oh, yeah. It's such a powerful way to frame those contrasting money mindsets. Totally. You've got Kiyosaki's own dad, the poor dad, hard worker, but always struggling financially. Right. And then his friend's dad, the rich dad, who just seemed to have this knack for building wealth. Like they were looking at the same world through completely different lenses, you know. Totally. Remember that quote where poor dad's like, the love of money is the root of all evil. And then rich dad comes in and just flips the script. The lack of money is the root of all evil. Whoa. Talk about a perspective shift, right? Makes you think about how much of our own financial outlook is shaped by those early beliefs we pick up. It's true. It reminds me of that part where Kiyosaki talks about his childhood home, right? Oh, yeah. His dad was so proud to call it their biggest investment. And meanwhile, Rich Dad would seen it as a liability. Draining your account instead of adding to it. Huge difference in how they viewed assets versus liabilities. Such a fundamental concept in the book. It's not just about how much you earn, but how you manage what you've got. It's about plugging those leaks in your financial bucket. Exactly. Did any particular leaks come to mind when you were reading? I'm curious. Well, for me, it goes back to Kiyosaki's point about financial literacy. Which it it's essential. You have to understand the difference between an asset, something that puts money in your pocket, and a liability, which takes it out. It's like the foundation of everything else. Exactly. And he uses that story of uh, Ray Crocs, the McDonald's guy, to really bring that home. Oh, right. Croc didn't get rich flipping burgers. It was the real estate. The land under those golden arches. But that's where the real wealth was. It's a deeper level of business thinking. You know, he saw beyond the immediate product. He was playing the long game. Totally. Owning assets that appreciate over time. Instead of just working for that paycheck, he built a system where his money works for him. And that's a huge part of Kiyosaki's message, right? Yeah. Finding ways to generate that passive income. That money that just keeps flowing, whether you're clocking in or not. Exactly. And Kiyosaki's a big proponent of financial education for that very reason. Oh, absolutely. Understanding things like accounting, investing, how markets work, even the law. Yeah, yeah. Especially the tax advantages that corporations can offer. So it's not enough to just work hard. You got to work smart, too. You got it. Like learning the rules of the financial game. Right. You got to be financially intelligent, not just financially active. I like that. And part of that is recognizing the obstacles that can trip us up, right? Absolutely. And Kiyosaki identifies five big ones. Fear, cynicism, laziness, bad habits and arrogance. Let's be real, we've all probably battled with at least one of those. Oh, for sure. At some point in our lives. He really digs into each one with some pretty relatable examples. Yeah, let's start with fear for a second. Okay. Because I think that's a, a big one for a lot of people, right? The fear of losing money. Oh, yeah. Understandably so. Kiyosaki points out that even rich people lose money sometimes. It's about how you handle it. It's true. Yeah. What was it his rich dad said? If you hate risk and worry, Start early. Because time is your friend when it comes to investing. The sooner you start, even if it's with small amounts. The more time your money has to grow. I wish I had heard that advice sooner. Me too. But for those of us who maybe didn't start as early as we'd like, Kiyosaki's rich dad had some interesting advice. Think like a Texan. <laughs> That one always makes me chuckle. Right. I was like, what does that even mean? He's not actually saying you should go out and buy a 10-gallon hat and a pair of cowboy boots. I hope not. The point is that successful people, like those larger-than-life Texans, are willing to take calculated risks. So it's more about their mindset. Exactly. They don't let the fear of losing paralyze them. Because they understand that setbacks are part of the process. They're not afraid to go big, but they're strategic about it. So it's about changing your relationship with failure, you know, mm -hmm. seeing it as a potential stepping stone. Instead of a dead end. Right. Now let's talk about cynicism for a moment. Oh, man. Cynicism? That can be such a buzzkill. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, totally. It's like it sucks the air out of the room. Kiyosaki's rich dad had this great line, 
Cynics criticize and winners analyze. Ooh, I like that one. It's about shifting your focus, you right. know, instead of just pointing out why something won't work. You look for solutions, mm -hmm. for opportunity. Exactly. And that kind of segues into the next obstacle, laziness. Okay. How so? Well, it's not always about being physically lazy, right? Not, it's not... about being mentally lazy with your finances. Oh, interesting. You mean like burying your head in the sand, even when you know you should be paying attention. Exactly. You could be working your tail off at your job, but then right. you avoid opening your bank statements like the plague. Or you put off learning about investing because it just feels too complicated. Been there. It can feel really overwhelming. Oh, tell me about it. But Kiyosaki's rich dad was all about facing those fears head on. Asking questions. Seeking out knowledge. Because the more you know, the more empowered you are. He believed in the power of the mind to overcome those challenges, you know? Totally. Remember that part where he talks about how his rich dad taught him to ask, how can I afford it? Instead of just shutting down the possibility with, I can't afford it. It's such a subtle shift, but <laughs> so powerful, right? Right, it's about reframing those internal limitations. Flipping the script in your mind. And that leads us to bad habits, which, let's be honest. We've all been guilty of at some point. Oh, absolutely. I know I have. It doesn't matter how much knowledge you have. If you're constantly overspending, or racking up debt. Or just not tracking your finances at all. You're sabotaging yourself. It's like trying to run a marathon with your shoelaces tied together. Ah, that's a good one. So what's the antidote? What did Kiyosaki recommend? Well, he's a huge advocate for developing good financial habits. Like paying yourself first. Exactly. That one's huge. That concept was a game changer for me, I'll admit. Right. It just makes sense, doesn't it? Totally. Before you pay anyone else, before you even think about buying anything extra, you set aside a portion of your income for your future self. It's about prioritizing your own financial well-being. So true. Okay, so we've covered fear, cynicism, laziness, bad habits. That leaves us with arrogance. Ah, yes, arrogance. The I've got it all figured out attitude. We all know someone like that. And you know what? A lot of times that arrogance stems from a place of insecurity. Oh, interesting. How so? It's like they're overcompensating for a fear of admitting they don't know everything. Makes sense. Whereas Kiyosaki's rich dad believed that true learning requires humility. Right? 100%. You got to be willing to say, I don't know, but I'm willing to learn. Be open to new information, even if it challenges your existing beliefs. Exactly. Remember that quote, what I know makes me money. What I don't know makes me lose money. So being a lifelong learner is crucial, especially in the ever-changing world of finance. Absolutely. And that's where finding good mentors comes in. Oh, that's huge. Kiyosaki talks a lot about the importance of mentors. Your own personal rich dads or rich moms. People who've already achieved what you're striving for. They can offer invaluable guidance, help you avoid those costly mistakes. It's like having a shortcut through the financial jungle, you know? Yeah. Speaking of which. It's like having a financial GPS. Right. Helping you navigate toward your goals. I love that analogy. Did any potential rich dad figures come to mind when you were reading? You know, I think we all have those people in our lives to some degree. True. It could be a family member who's really good with money. Right. Or a successful entrepreneur you admire. Exactly. Or even just someone who's really mastered a particular investment strategy. It's about being open to learning from their experiences, good and bad. Totally. Now, Kiyosaki talks a lot about that rat race trap, remember? Oh, yeah. That feeling of working hard, but never quite getting ahead. Stuck in that cycle of trading time for money, never quite reaching your full potential. It can feel like you're on a treadmill, going nowhere fast. How do we break free? What's the key? Well, Kiyosaki's big on taking action. Don't just dream it, be about it, right? Exactly. He's got that famous line, don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait. I mean, he definitely emphasizes real estate a lot in the book. It's a tangible asset, right. something you can see and touch, and it's historically been a reliable way to build wealth. Plus, there's that whole concept of leverage, right? Using other people's money to potentially amplify your returns. Which can be risky, of course, mm -hmm. but also has the potential for big rewards. Exactly. And Kiyosaki emphasizes doing your due diligence, understanding the market. Right, not just jumping in blindly. He tells this great story about buying his first condo at a government auction. Oh, yeah, for a ridiculously low price. He fixed it up, rented it out, and boom, passive income. Proof that you don't need a ton of money to get started. Just the right knowledge and the willingness to take action. And be resourceful. Totally. Now, he also stresses that it's not always gonna be easy. 
Of course not. There will be challenges, setbacks, maybe even a few sleepless nights. That's part of the journey, though, right? Absolutely. And Kiyosaki talks about the importance of managing risk. You can't eliminate risk entirely, but... You can learn to mitigate it. Make smart, calculated decisions. Exactly. His rich dad had that great line, if you want to be rich, you must know what kind of income to work hard for, how to keep it, and how to protect it from loss. Financial self-defense, I love it. So we've got to be smart, we've got to be resourceful, and we've got to be resilient. 100%. And remember, building wealth is a marathon, not a sprint. It's about making those small, consistent steps over time. Staying disciplined, staying focused. And adjusting your approach as needed. Because the financial landscape is always changing. That's why that emphasis on continuous learning is so crucial. Never stop reading, never stop asking questions. You got it. Surround yourself with people who challenge you to grow. Find those mentors, those rich dad figures who can offer guidance and support. And remember, it's not all about the money. Right. Kiyosaki also talks about the importance of giving back. Once you've achieved a certain level of financial success. Sharing your wealth with others, supporting causes you believe in. It's about using your resources to make a positive impact on the world. You know, when I think about it, that's what really resonated with me about Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Me too. It's not just about accumulating wealth for yourself. It's about what you do with that wealth. How you use it to create a more fulfilling life for yourself and for others. It's about aligning your financial goals with your values. Exactly. It's about financial freedom and personal fulfillment. So as we wrap up this deep dive, here's my big takeaway. Rich Dad, Poor Dad isn't a magic formula for getting rich quick. It's a blueprint for changing your mindset. For taking control of your financial future. And designing a life of abundance on your own terms. So go out there, find those opportunities, and build the life you want. The life you deserve. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive, everyone. Until next time.